Soccer is a globalized sport with billions of dollars on the market. By the age of 18, players can transfer to any country in any team, making a massive list of players who can transfer. Last summer, in the Premier League, a professional soccer league in England, $2.2 billion was spent in the transfer window, breaking the record for most money ever spent during one. Good morning, I'm Benjamin Swan. To spend this amount of money, teams need to be profitable. Winning the league or winning tournaments can cause teams to make these large sums of money that give them a competitive edge on the teams that are not winning. For example, Nottingham Forest, a team that just got promoted to the Premier League, can win up to $300 million if they do not get relegated down. Another team, uh, Chelsea, won $95 million for the tournament they competed in, the Champions League. Instances like this are how teams are able to make most of their money. Because of the possibility of these profits, teams will go to extreme amounts of money to get the best players, such as when Neymar Jr. was bought for over $200 million, a figure that had never been obtained before. With this much money being spent on one player, teams need to have preparatory strategies to be able to predict how this, team, how this player will react to their new team. After all, if players such as Neymar Jr. don't succeed on their new team, they will have a lack of funds to be able to replace such players. This begs the question. When tra players are transferred, should they go to teams where they fit the play style or to teams where they fit the culture? This led to the argument that players have the ability to adapt to these new cultures, so it's, ability, so it's more important for these players to transfer to new teams with a fitting play style. Many argue that players should go to a fitting play style. Over, take Olivier Giroud, for example, who in 2016 was recorded as the slowest player in the Premier League at 29.19 kilometers an hour. In his 2020-2021 season, he played at Chelsea Football Club. However, his next team was at AC Milan. At Chelsea, he played in a 3-4-3 formation. However, in AC Milan, he played in a 3-5-2 formation. According to Leon Forcher, doing a study, he's a former scientist and former professional player, the 3-4-3 formation requires much more high intensity sprints per game, while 3-5-2 requires far less of them. Statistically, the slower player, Olivier Giroud, performed better in this slower fitting play style. As the graph shows, at Chelsea he was scoring 0.46 goals per game at Chelsea and zero assists, while scoring 0.52 per game and 0.14 assists at AC Milan. Additionally, in his player rating, he was getting 0.63 per game However, on his new team, he was getting 7.17 per game, showing an increase in multiple stats with a more fitting play style, showing how important it can be. Others argue, though, that culture is the most important fit. An example of this would be a game of September 17, 2017, where RB Leipzig, a team from Germany, played against Bestikas, a team from Turkey. To give some context, Germany is known for its fans. They are, however, they come nowhere close to the atmosphere of these Turkish fans which season after season are recorded as the loudest fans in the world. Now in this match, Timo Werner had to be substituted after just 32 minutes due to an injury. Being substituted this early due to injury is not uncommon. However, the cause of this was, Timo Werner got vertigo induced, in, induced by the noise of the Vestikas fans, stating after the game, I have never seen such an atmosphere in my life. I could not focus on the match. I asked for a headset and when it, I got it, it did not help either. Even with the earplugs, Timo could not handle the Turkish team culture, meaning if a team from the Turkish league was to look for a new player, Timo Werner would not be a good fit. It would not perform at the same level that he has in Germany. Zlatan Ibrahimovic is a player that, with over 500 goals in seven different leagues, seemingly able to do it anywhere. There was one place where he seemed unable to perform at though, Barcelona. When asked about his time there in an interview, a few years later, he had to say this, when you buy me, you are buying a Ferrari. If you drive a Ferrari, you put premium fuel in the tank, you drive onto the motorway, and you floor the accelerator. Guardiola filled it up with diesel and went for a spin on the countryside. If that's what he wanted, he should have bought a Fiat from the start. This is another example of a player not fitting the team's culture. When disagreeing with the coach, Zlatan would get into frequent arguments with the team and coach and did not perform at his regular level. One would argue that this could be the most important. However, the famous Nelson Mandela once stated, men have different capacities and react differently to stress, but the stronger ones raised up the weaker ones, and they both became stronger in the process. These are the same principles that are involved in soccer. When a player is down, others need to help pick them up. Many are moving to new countries with new languages and new cultures. It, it can be difficult for some to transition, but others are able to help. This is what creates either a good or bad team culture. This leads to the argument, this goes back to the argument 
that although fitting the right culture can be important, players can assimilate to them, making play style the most important factor. Take Alfonso Davies, for example, a Canadian player who grew up in Vancouver, who after three years in the American Soccer League, MLS, decided that he wanted to transfer. At the fresh age of 18, Alfonso Davies moved to Bayern Munich in Germany. Moving overseas that far can be difficult, especially at such a young age. However, for Alfonso Davies, he seemed to thrive. Very quickly, he was already a starter and a key player for Bayern Munich. After six months, he was already well-spoken in the language too, doing a full interview in fluent German. For most players, transition may take years, but not for Alfonso. As you can see on this graph, in the 2018-2019 season, in the MLS, he averaged a 7.6 rating per game. However, in his first full year with Bayern, he was averaging a 7.4 rating. Meaning, even though he was moved across an entire country to this outside culture, he was still able to perform at a similar level. His bold, extravagant personality was an easy fit for the Bayern Munich team. His fans and his teammates loved him and became the face of Canadian soccer. Players can have struggles in different cultures, but they are able to adapt to them. As professionals, they have already been through this mental challenge. With many growing up in the academy, players already have lived through similar experiences. Not knowing anyone when first joining and having to adapt to the team culture is not a first for many of them. They are mentally strong and can easily overcome the challenge of a new culture. Thank you. I have two questions for you. What evidence did you gather that you didn't use and then why'd you choose not to use it? Um, there was some evidence on the differences between say an Italian team versus an, an English team and how the Italian culture caused the difference in the play style. However, it was much more of a tangent on my original argument about culture, so I used uh, first person experiences from players instead. Okay, and explain the level of certainty you are of your conclusion. Um, I'm very certain about my conclusion because most of the information I got was from statistics or players' first-hand experiences, meaning I got it right from the source. 